Hey there, tech fans. Rick here from the O-Ray team with an overview of the UHD14-EXB400-K 1x4 4K HDMI Media Splitter and Extender Kit. This product was designed to make it very simple for you to share a single HDMI media source with four remote locations at distances up to 120 meters away in full 4K ultra high definition resolution or up to 150 meters away in full 1080p resolution over a single CAT6, CAT6A, or CAT7 cable. The sender unit features power over cable technology, which means once you add power to the sender unit, it will distribute all the power needed for the remote locations to operate without the requirement for a power supply at that location, which greatly simplifies the installation process. The sender unit also features local loopback functionality, which means you can enjoy the content at your primary location while you're simultaneously distributing it to the remote locations. Each of the modules also feature audio extraction capabilities, which will actually strip the audio from the HDMI media stream being sent and allow allow you at those locations to pass that to an audio system for the best possible audio quality. Finally, each of the modules include an infrared blaster kit, which will capture those remote control signals at those locations and send those back over the same network cable to the primary location so you can actually control the content you're watching. Now, as part of this overview, I'd like to start with an unboxing of the product just to show you everything that's included with the kit, and then I'll list the audio and video standards the product can support. I'll take a closer look at all the modules and explain exactly what they do, and then finally, I'll come back and actually install the product here to show you just how easy it is to use. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you open up the box, you'll find the sender module, a power supply for the sender module, a bracketing kit that can be used to mount the module up off the ground and out of the way. Also included are four receiver kits, and each receiver kit is exactly the same. You'll find the receiver module, a set of infrared blasters, some sticky pads that you can use to mount those to your media equipment, and a set of brackets to mount that module up and out of the way. Also included is a set of RS-232 connections because the unit can distribute that over the same network cable if you decide to do that. And you'll find a warranty card that explains exactly what the warranty for the product is, as well as a full instruction manual which gives you everything you need to know about how to install the unit, connection diagrams, specifications of what it can support, and some other information that's really critical to the installation process. Now, if you stay tuned, next I'll list the audio and video standards of product and support, and then we'll take a closer look at all the components included with the kit, and I'll explain exactly what they do. The O-Ray UHD14-EXB400-K supports a wide range of media devices, including laptops, game systems, cable receivers, streaming media devices, and DVD players. The product features full support for 4K ultra-high definition media streams up to 120 meters away, and full 1080p media streams up to 150 meters away. It is HDMI 2.0B compliant, as well as HDCP 2.2 and 1.X. The audio support includes DTS HD Master, Dolby True HD, Dolby Digital, and LPCM 2.0, 2.1, 5.1, 6.1, and 7.1. It also provides audio extraction capabilities and includes an infrared blaster kit for each of the modules for full control over your media. Inside the kit you'll find the sender module, a power supply for the sender module, and a power cable that allows you to plug that power supply into any standard wall outlet. The power supply is a heavy-duty 24-volt 2.7 amp DC power supply. This end has a barrel connection on it which plugs into the back of the sender module. And because this sender module employs power over cable, it will use this power supply and distribute the power needed for each of the remote locations to operate over the same network cable you use for connection. Also included in the kit is a set of brackets that can be used to mount the sender module up off the ground and out of the way and a set of infrared blasters that will capture remote control signals from the remote locations and send those back to the primary location so you can actually control the content you're watching. Now there are two different styles of IR blasters, one with a larger head and one with a smaller head. The larger head is the receiver and the smaller head is the transmitter, so it's important to make sure those are plugged into the correct ports on the back of the unit. Also included are two sticky pads you can use to attach these to your devices. Also in the kit, is a receiver module and another set of infrared blasters again that can be used at each of the remote locations as well as the sticky pads required to attach those to the media components and a set of brackets you can use to actually mount the receivers up off the ground and out of the way. There's a warranty card included that explains exactly what warranty comes with the product and how to register it and then finally a full instruction manual is also included with specifications, connection diagrams and all the information you'll need to actually operate the product. 
The sender module features a full metal enclosure, which helps to minimize outside interference from causing any issues with the audio and video signals you'll be transmitting to the four remote locations. On either side of the sender module, you'll find slots that were designed into the product for ventilation to keep the electronics inside at a comfortable temperature. You'll also notice two holes on either side that can be used with the included bracketing kit to mount this module up off the ground and out of the way if needed. On the front of the module are a series of indicators. Starting on the left, you'll find a power indicator. The minute you plug the power supply into an outlet and add power to the unit, that will illuminate, indicating valid power. To the right of that are two HDMI indicators, HDMI in, HDMI loop out. When you connect the valid media source up to the sender module and that connection's been verified, this indicator will come on. To the right of that is the loop connection. The product provides local loopback functionality, which actually allows you to enjoy the content that you're transmitting to those four remote locations here at the primary location. And to do that, you'll connect an HDMI cable to the loop out port in the back of the sender module to a local monitor. Once that connection's been made and the sender module verifies the connection, the loop indicator will come on. To the right of that are four network connection indicators. When you make a network connection from any of the output ports in the back of the sender module to one of the receiver modules, once that verification's been done by the sender, it'll actually light up these indicators, letting you know you've got a valid connection. On the bottom of the unit are more ventilation slots, and on the rear of the units where you'll make all your connections, and I'll start on the bottom row on the left-hand side. You'll find a bank of EDID switches that are used to adjust synchronicity between the input media source and the output monitors, with reference to things like frame rates and resolution, and all of those are explained fully in the manual. To the right of that are two HDMI port connections, HDMI in and loop out. This connection goes directly to your media source. Again, it could be a DVD player or a game console, short HDMI cable to that. That's the source you'd like to distribute to these remote locations. If you want to use the local loopback functionality, you'll connect another cable from here to a local monitor, and you can enjoy this content while you're transmitting it. To the right of that are your network connections. These are a standard network cable, again, a CAT6, CAT6A, or CAT7. One end gets plugged in here. The other end goes to the receiver module. Once you make that connection, the unit will test it and light the indicator on the front, letting you know it's valid. To the right of that is your DC port connection. So the power supply would plug into the wall and plug in here. That's the only power you'll need for the unit and all the receiver modules. On the top row, starting on the left, the unit can also transmit RS-232 signals, and you can use the connectors that are included with the kit to make a connection here if you want to transmit those over that same network connection. To the right of that are two infrared blaster module connection ports, 3.5 millimeter ports. You'll plug in one of the blasters here and the other one there. Just be sure you're plugging the IR in here and the IR out there because they are different with the blasters. The unit also provides local audio extraction capabilities, and here's where you'll make those audio connections. You can either make it through a coax connection, or you can make left and right connections here. And again, there's a plug in included with the kit that you can use to make that connection easier. But that allows you to take the audio that's actually stripped from the HDMI media stream that's being transmitted to these locations and send that to a local audio source for better quality audio. To the right of that is a ground stud in case you want to ground this to eliminate more interference. And to the right of that is a power switch you can use to turn the unit on and off. That's pretty much it for the sender unit. The receiver module features a full metal enclosure as well to help minimize outside interference. On either side of the receiver modules, you'll find venting slots that were designed to let any heat that's generated during operation escape to keep the internal electronics at a very comfortable temperature. On the front of the receiver module, starting on the left, you'll find a power indicator. The module doesn't require local power because the sender module employs power over cable technology. The minute power is added to the sender module and the network connection between the two is made, all the power needed to operate these remote locations will be provided by the sender module over that same network cable. And once that happens, this LED will light up, indicating you've got valid power at this location. To the right of that is a service port. That's not normally needed, but if firmware updates have to take place to the module, you'll connect up a micro USB cable from here to your computer and push the firmware over to complete the update. On the bottom of the module are more venting slots, as well as mounting holes on either side that can be used with the included bracketing kit to mount this up off the ground and out of the way. On the rear of the module is where all the connections are made. On the left-hand side is a DC power input port. That's not needed as long as you're connecting a network cable up between this and the sender module. All the power you require to run this module, again, will be sent over that same network cable. To the right of that is the port connection for the network cable. Again, it has to be a CAT6, CAT6A, or CAT7 cable between this and the sender unit. And that's the only connection you'll need to start streaming content to this remote location. To the right of that is the HDMI output port, and that's connected to the local monitor where you want to display that content. 
To the right of that is an audio output port. That's a three and a half millimeter analog connection. The unit can do audio extraction, which will actually strip the audio from the HDMI stream being sent and will output it here. And you can send that to a local audio system for better quality audio. To the right of that are where the infrared blaster kits connect, infrared in and infrared out. And to the right of that is the port connection for any transmit and receive signals you want to use over that same network connection that are RS-232. And that's it for the receiver module. Now I'll show you the connections you'll need to make to use the HDMI splitter and extender kit with your own equipment. For this demonstration, I've set up four monitors to simulate the four remote locations that you'd like to distribute the content to. Over here, I have a small media player connected up to this bottom monitor that's currently looping a video that I'll use as the content that I'll distribute to those remote locations. In front of me, I have the sender module and I have four receiver modules. Now, the first set of connections I'll make are to the sender module and I'll start with the media content. I'll disconnect that from the bottom monitor, HDMI, and I'll connect that to the HDMI input port in the back of the sender module. Now I'm ready to add power. I've already plugged the power supply in and I've got a barrel connection to the DC input port on the back. Now, the minute I add power to the sender module, it starts what's called a power on self-test, where it's checking all the internal electronics to make sure everything is working fine. It's also checking the resolution of my input source to make whatever adjustments are needed before it distributes that content to these remote locations to give you the best possible picture. And now that I'm done with the sender module, I can connect up the four remote modules. So I'll start with these two over here. I've got HDMI cables already connected up to the monitors and those plug into the HDMI output ports on both of the receiver modules. Now I'll move on to the last two. I've got one HDMI cable on the top monitor. I'll connect that over here to three. And then I've got one extra cable here and I'll connect that up to the monitor and the output port on the fourth receiver module. All right, now that I'm done with the receiver modules, the only connection I'm missing at this point is the network connections between the sender module and each of these remote locations. And they have to be a CAT6, CAT6A, or CAT7 cable, and they can be very long. But since I'm getting a little tight on space, I'm using a shorter cable just to simulate it. Now, the minute I connect up this network cable between the sender and receiver modules, a couple of things are gonna happen. The sender module will recognize that it's connected to a receiver module. It'll send power over there to activate the module, and it'll start a handshaking sequence for the network adjustments and the video adjustments needed to be able to send that media to it. So I'll connect up this end first, white and blue. And then once I've made that connection, I'll connect these to port one and two on the back of the sender module. And the minute I do that, negotiation starts between them. Once a network negotiation finishes, the sender module will actually illuminate the first two LEDs up there. So it lets me know immediately that I've got a good network connection between modules one and two. I'll do the same over here. I've got a red and a yellow LAN cable. These are CAT6. All right, and I'll connect the yellow up to port three and the red up to port four. And these take a second or two to negotiate. So these look like they're done already. You can see that the content's already being distributed. These are still going through a power on self-test. As soon as they finish, there's the content over there. So again, it's a pretty quick process, but the sender module has to recognize that there are receiver modules out there and make those adjustments really quickly to give you the best possible picture. Now, one other really nice feature of this particular product is it has a local loopback functionality, which means you can actually enjoy the content here at the primary location while you're distributing it to these remote locations. Because remember, these are pretty far away, so it's nice that you can enjoy the content here. And to show you that, I've got one really small monitor that I'll connect up to the HDMI loop out port on the back of the sender module. And the minute I do that, you can see that you're gonna be able to enjoy the content right here at this location. Now, again, this can be a gigantic monitor at the sender location. I'm just doing this because of the space on the desk. But anyway, there's your loop out at the local location right here while I'm distributing it to these four remote locations. And it really is just that simple to connect it up. I hope you found this overview of the UHD14-EXB400-K 1x4 4K HDMI media splitter and extender kit helpful. This product really is the perfect way of sharing any HDMI media content you have with four remote locations at distances up to 120 meters in full 4K ultra high definition resolution or even further up to 150 meters in full 1080p resolution over a single CAT6, CAT6A or CAT7 cable. And the fact that it provides power over cable technology means you eliminate 
grade A power supplies at those remote locations, making installation really easy. It provides audio extraction capabilities to allow you to pull the audio from the HDMI stream you're distributing and really get that best quality sound. And then finally, the inclusion of the infrared blasters means that you can fully control whatever you're watching from those remote locations over that same network cable. Now, everything you need to get started is included with the kit, and with a few simple connections, you can be up and running in no time. So until next time, thanks for watching.